Hello and welcome to this professional development video on helping students select appropriate topics. I am Cheryl Duffus, your QEP director. And if you are already watching this video, then you, you are in our QEP Blackboard org. And you can see that I also have a link to the PowerPoint for this video, as well as a couple of links I'm going to talk about in a minute about um, assignment design. So getting into this problem of how to help students select good topics, the first thing I would like to talk about is assignment design. Um, sometimes students don't select appropriate, engaging topics because of the way the assignment is designed. Now this can be diff difficult to hear. Um, when I was a graduate student, I um, spent a year being a teaching assistant for a professor who did a very large lecture class around 300 students and it was a survey in American literature and it was what you would expect all the kind of big familiar names like Edgar Allan Poe, Emily Dickinson, um, Emerson, Thoreau, etc. And we had a rash of plagiarism problems in the class and the procedure at that institution was that we had to inform the chair um, of our plagiarism problems and he said you know, they had just downloaded essays from the internet. It was a pretty cut and dry case. And he said, yes, you know, assign the penalty appropriate for plagiarism. He said, but you might want to think about the fact that you might have a problem with the way your assignment is designed. And I was a young graduate student and my first thought was very defensive. I was like, we don't have a problem. You have a problem. Why are you blaming us for students' poor decisions? And it's true, he, I don't think he meant to say it's your fault that they plagiarized. You know, they did make that choice, but his point was, that there was something about our assignment that was allowing them to very easily plagiarize um, for this class. So either, you know, and as I look back on it, I think the assignments were very generic. They were very, um, they were very open-ended and the students probably either didn't know what to do or they just weren't engaged. And to them, it, you know, why work on this? It's not worth it. And so they went and they downloaded things from the internet. And so sometimes, it can be hard to hear that maybe the problem is from our end, but the lesson I took from that, and I always remember what that chair had said, is that if you know I'm having a problem in my class, let's say it's one student who plagiarizes, mm, but if I have a big group of students plagiarized, I, I think the problem also is, is with me. And so I think if I'm having a problem with students not picking topics that um, lead to engaging writing, um, picking topics that are inappropriate, then there might be something going on with my, um, the way I have designed my assignment. So I've got a couple of um, links about how to create more engaging problem-based assignments and that encourages students to pick better assignments. Um, so let me just get to those real quick. So one of them is creating problem-based writing assignments. That's from the Writing Across the Curriculum Clearinghouse with Colorado State. And I will go to that one first. So here is just kind of a list of alternative paper assignments. So this might help you to think about how, how you can design an assignment in a, in, a, in a way that's still accomplishing what you want it to. The students are still learning what you need them to learn, but it might prompt, um, I don't know, better writing, <laughs> which leads to happier grading. And that's my point. I guess that would be one of, this isn't officially in the QEP, but one of my goals for the QEP is that we all are more less stressed when we're grading writing. Um, so a good example here is you can take something that might have been, you know, just a detailed description of a chemistry experiment and the steps in this chemistry experiment. But if you tell the students, you know, you're going to write this in, in a chapter for chemistry for dummies, then that kind of changes things up for them. It gives them a real kind of real life audience. It raises the stakes for them and they know they have to explain this in a very clear way. So again, they would demonstrate the learning and knowledge that they need to, but just by giving them kind of a different audience or a different context for writing, um, that, that might lead to a more um, engaging end product for you to read. So there is just a whole long list of suggestions here um, in different disciplines. So there's biology, there's ethics, there's um, women's studies, consumer studies, uh, et cetera. So you could just take a look at these and see if any of them um, Prompt your, prompt your brain. Um, an example here, the second one is from um, a book by John Bean called Engaging Ideas, and it's all about how to promote greater critical thinking in your classroom, how to get students more engaged, and how to make your grading more, more productive. Um, 
So he has, he makes the same point that you can take an assignment and the way that you design it, making small changes might lead to more interesting writing and it might lead to the students being more engaged. So the example he selects is from nursing and it's this practice of therapeutic touch, which is an alternative, which is a form of alternative medicine. So he said, you know, you can, you can pick the usual option where you just research this thing and write an APA paper, or you could change the context and purpose for writing. So you could ask the students to pretend like they're a staff nurse at a hospital and they have to write something to the hospital's board, either for or against this practice. Or they and some colleagues have to um, write, have to write a, a, a grant fund, yeah, um, for this. And so they have to review the literature and then make a request for grant funding to do research on therapeutic touch. And again, this would put them in actual professional writing environments. It, it, you know, it might not be um, unheard of for a nurse to write something to the hospital board or for researchers to seek grant funding, et cetera. Um, you could have them do a literature review and um, then you could also make them make an argument either for or against schools of nursing um, teaching therapeutic touch. So again, these are all doing the same thing. The students are having to research this controversial practice. They're going to have to take a stand on it, but it's putting them in more engaging situations. And again, it could lead to better writing and better, um, more engaged students. I think two allowing students to select topics that they are connected to or interested in can lead to better writing and more engaged students. Um, I did this in an English 102 class two springs ago where I, um, I still gave them guidance and parameters as to their topics, but they had to go on the TED Talks website and they had to pick a talk that they were really interested in and that was going to be their research topic for the semester. So it, thankfully it did get them away from the kind of cliched freshman writing topics like abortion and gun control, which after 20 years, I'm, I'm really tired of. Um, and it, but it allowed them to pick a topic that they were interested in. They had to watch a TED talk on it. And so they could figure out pretty quickly if it was something they found interesting. And they felt like they had some, I don't know, some choice. And I will say that this was probably the best writing I've gotten out of English 102. And I think a lot of it was because they were, they were engaged. So I think that you still, you can still get um, restrictions within your assignment design, but um, you can allow students to select their topics as much as possible. Um, let's see, so once you've um, designed your assignment, you do want to make sure that students understand the assignment and that they, if you have any um, restrictions, that they understand those restrictions. So sometimes we write an assignment and we use words and language um, that are very familiar to us, but they might not be familiar to the students, especially if you are teaching a gen ed class or you're teaching, um, you know, freshman and sophomore level students, they, they just might not really get what you're writing. So make sure students understand the assignment. You can do this really quickly and formally. You could either have students individually write a short paragraph explaining the assignment back to you in their own words, or you could have students get together in small groups of three and um, as a group come up with, you know, this is what we think the assignment is about. So again, you can just pick, pick whatever method um, might work for you. You could just call on students and ask them to explain the assignment for their, for their class members. But I think this is crucial because, um, you know, taking the time and explaining each step of the process, because sometimes students don't think about, well, if I pick a really bad topic, then I'm doomed. I'm gonna have a bad paper. I can't write a good paper on this topic, if it's too broad, if it's too narrow, if it's been written about so much that you're gonna bore your reader, um, you know, they need help with, um, with giving them some rules for picking topics and also having their topics vetted. And that's a really important part of the writing process. You can also have them get in their small writing groups to brainstorm topics. They can get, you know, come up with three topics and have your um, classmates decide which ones sound more interesting. You know, because a lot of it is, you know, what's going to be engaging for the reader. You can also ask students after they brainstorm to write topics on the board and the class can discuss them and give feedback. As an instructor, you can say, wow, you know, from those TED Talks, I had a student write basketball up on the board. And I was like, well, you could probably write 20 books on basketball. It's like basketball. OK, I'm glad you're interested in this, but we've got to make this much more narrow. And he did eventually end up narrowing it into how technology is being used to train 
players better because they have all these fancy feedback things on their watches and specialized video cameras in the practice rooms. And it was fascinating. I learned so much from this student, but he, you know, he was like basketball. And I'm like, no, <laughs> freshman comp, you can't just do everything about basketball. So again, you can talk about problems with topics and that's where if there's a topic that you're sick of, you can talk about, you know, this is why I'm sick of it. How are you going to make this interesting for me? Because, you know, I'm all about make the teacher happy. All right, um, you can also ask students to submit topics to you for feedback. You can also ask for one to three topics if you're worried that s several students are gonna pick the same topic and you know, you can just tell them up front. I'm not letting you all write about the same things because then I'm going to be bored and you know, you're gonna get a bad grade because I'm bored. So I would say if they not just have them submit, not just the topic, because that might inspire them to just write you one sentence, but really get them to think about, well, why am I picking this topic? I think purposeful topic selection. So you can ask them, why are they interested in the topic? Um, what do they already know about the topic? Where did they get this knowledge? Was it from another class? Was it from something they read? Is it from their friends, their parents, um, the media, TV shows? Why, where did they get their knowledge? Um, why do they want to learn about this topic? You know, what's at stake for them? And again, I think that's where we can create engagement, not only having creative problem-based assignments, but getting them to feel like, getting the students to feel like, well, I can learn something from this. This is somehow gonna benefit me. So this is all about kind of tricking them <laughs> psychologically. Um, you can get them to think about why is this an appropriate topic for this class? Um, you may have a problem with a certain assignment where you know, there's always five or 10 students who they just pick something that's inappropriate. So get them to think about why they think this is an appropriate topic, who their audience might be, what are they going to have to do to help this audience, and, you know, what's going to be the purpose of this writing assignment for them? What do they want to accomplish by learning more and writing more about this topic? And again, these are kind of psychological tricks to make them to give them a sense of having some control over the assignment they have some input they have a voice and again you know the, these might seem kind of silly things to do but my goal is for you to have a better final draft to grade and there's nothing worse than having a stack of final drafts and you're just you're you're crying because it's so time consuming they're not well done, they're not engaging, and sometimes if we can set students up at the beginning um, and get them in a better place with thinking better, being more critical, um, being more engaged and creative, then you might get a better end product um, and not be tearing your hair out at the end of the semester. Something else that um, I, I get asked a lot is how to keep students, once they've perhaps picked a topic or a broad area they're interested in, and if they're doing research or if you've had a lot of class lecture or class reading about a topic, how can we keep them from being too influenced by others' ideas? So I would say this is just a matter of constantly having them reflect on their research. So, and this is stuff you don't even have to grade. You don't even have to look at. You could have them have a keep a research notebook or um, it could be electronic or it could be paper and you could ask them you know what have you learned from research how is it changing or adding to your ideas about the topic are you finding anything that contradicts your ideas so the more you can get them to reflect on and process their research the, that'll be easier for them to keep their opinions straight from others because especially when you think about young people 18 to 22 they feel like they don't know what they're doing which they might not, they don't know as much as these people who are published and they might, you know, just kind of mimic something that they have read because it's, it sounds so much better than anything that they have come up with. But, you know, we want them to be able to think for themselves. So I would say getting them to process their research in different ways and to constantly write and reflect on it are, are, would be good activities. So you can do this informally. There's some strategies I've suggested elsewhere with keeping um, a double entry journal where they take notes on their um, a source on one side and then they write, you know, here's what I'm thinking about the source on the other side. Here's how it adds to my topic. Here's how it contradicts with me. Here's what I don't understand, etc. Having them do things like annotated bibs, lit reviews, those things are helpful as well. And again, you can make it part of the assignment, you know, not just what is in the source, but how is the source contributing to what you think? How does it con contradict what you think? 
Um, all right, so I would say next steps might be to take, a, take out an assignment and you know, build in some steps for helping students, guiding students in selecting their topics. So you can just make that part of your writing process for that assignment and think about how the best way that you want to guide and give feedback on topic selection. So you'll wanna think about what suits your style as a teacher and also how much time you have to do things in class versus outside of class. So like I said, you can do some of this stuff really quick in class with either students working individually in small groups, class discussion. If you don't have time for that, then think about um, some ways that students can just submit their topics to you and you can give very quick feedback. Again, this is the type of quick writing that I wouldn't want anyone to, you know, it's either you get a zero or 25 points. You know, the student either does it thoroughly or they, they just don't do it at all. Um, I would say some, uh, I have had really good luck with the journal assignment on Blackboard with topic selection. It's, um, it's very, the journal assignment is very good for kind of informal writing and it's private. It's just between the student and the instructor, but there's a space for you to leave feedback at the same time and you can look at the topic and your feedback on the same screen and it makes it, you just click from student to student to student and it's very, very quick. So I would say use that journal function and don't have them upload anything, just have them copy it and paste it. And even with um, two classes of 20 to 25 students each, I found it very quick to get through those, those topic selections. All right, so if you have anything you would like to share with me, please let me know if you have any strategies for helping students pick topics. I'd love to share them um, with others. If you have questions or if you want to talk about anything with me, then feel free to reach out, email, phone, stop by my office. I would love to talk to you. Thank you.